TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, man, but you can leave a like and comment. Subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, man, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, highlights might be on this page. Uh, or they might be on the main page. I don't know now. I'm just trying to figure stuff out. Don't forget, we do got merch, got mine on. You get me. And we got the Patreon. We post Monday through Friday, man. Uh, and anything that doesn't go on YouTube goes on here. What's crazy is I've tried to record two videos for today, and they both got blocked, both hour long blocked. One was a documentary on poor kids in the UK, and the other one was traffic cops. Which is shocking that traffic cops got blocked. That's wild. Anyway, this is Jimmy the Giant. UK versus US culture. Okay. Let me see if I see any cap. Britain and America are like twins separated from birth. The one was raised in fine aristocracy and the other was abandoned at a gas station and told Good luck. These two great nations have dominated the world both economically, militarily, and culturally. Everyone in Britain got in a big old boat and we set sail and we robbed, and this will sound far fetched, everyone in the world. Whilst having spawned from the same origins, they went off in their own two directions, becoming both very similar and very different. Yo, we all are great. We all should think that we're great. There's no reason for you to not think that you're great. I've started to get this feeling that I'm totally, totally Fucked. You know, everything's <laughs> fucked. Today, we will analyze American versus British culture. The American comic hero is a wisecracker who is above his material and who is above the idiots around him. You know that scene in uh, Animal House where the play, uh, there's a fellow playing folk music on a guitar? John Belushi picks up the guitar and destroys it. Never seen Animal House. I mean, he's sitting on the lock because he just smashes it and then waggles his eyebrows at the camera. Everyone says, God, he's so great. Well, a British comedian would want to play the folk singer. <laughs> comedy is a great way of revealing a culture's ideas. So American comedy and British comedy, they're very different. American comedies always tend to be built around the idea of, like, optimism and positivity. Be curious, not judgmental. I like that. There's typically always the motion that things can get better. You can see this in the character Leslie Nope in Parks and Rec. I can do it. I can crush him. I promise. And typically, in an American comedy, the cool guy is the main character. So you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. Now, let's compare that to British comedies. Typically, the idea in a British comedy is that life will always disappoint you. We need to have a talk. You finishing with me? We weren't ever really. <laughs> oh. I see you not around, but here. See you. That's crazy that that's how that started and they had a whole kid at, by the end. <laughs> Secondly, you'll never make it in life. All your dreams and hopes and optimism. I feel like I've seen this before, but it's only been out two weeks. But I, like, it feels eerily similar to something I watched. Mism is ultimately futile. I have this dream. You and I own this skyscraper office block on the South Bank. And above us, on top of the skyscraper, in 50 foot high neon lettering, are the initials of Trotters, independent traders. Just above your head is the word tip. <laughs> Another idea that is shown is that you can always expect the worst thing to happen. So, uh, it's, yeah. <gasps> right, thank you very much. Do you like it? Oh, so I put that on you. Brilliant. Do you want another beer? Was that my beer? Yeah. What? Do you, do you want me to get the other Yes! And finally, the main character, the point of focus in a British comedy, will typically be some awkward loser. I like your glasses. I'm afraid they're not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh all you want, they're not for sale. And so this leads us to our first key cultural difference. And that is American idealism versus British realism. Instead of Are you saying we're stuck in La La Land while you focus on what's really going on? Me telling you this, I'm going to show you it through expressions. Americans will say things like this. Well, you know what they say. 
The sky's the limits. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Where That's facts. You That is facts. In Britain, we'll say things like, Go hope for the best, but expect the worst, mate. We that is also facts as well, though. We literally have a thing called Sod's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. And then let's say you have a... See, maybe that's why I identify as a British man, because I believe both of those statements that bro said. Situation where something is, is looking good. You've got an opportunity. Americans will say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Whereas we'll literally say, well, old boy, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And then finally, if you're in America and your whole life is, is going terribly, it's looking awful, Americans say, well, it's always darkest before dawn. It's facts, though. In England, if everything's going well, we'll say, yeah. Crikey, crikey, isn't it? Yeah, mate, but this is just the calm before the storm. So you might be wondering... The same thing. Why? Why do we have these very distinct attitude differences? Oh, calm before the storm is not the same thing. Okay. It's gonna get worse is what they say in, in the UK. Before we go any further with this video, cold to add fume is natural, delicious. I really like 100,000 hats. Fume today, I pick QR code and use the code. You get your journey pack today. Anyway, back to the video. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A lot of the British attitude can really be pointed to our very long and brutal history. We've had tons of wars and plagues and religious upheavals. All of these things have kind of led to British people sort of having doubt and distrust into the future. Like, yeah, it might be going well now, but tomorrow, a swarm of Belgians might come over and behead us. <laughs> Understanding our, this is w editing. our history gives us this cautiousness to being too optimistic about the future. As well, you have to combine the religious attitudes of the Church of England. The Church of England was very much a believer in the idea of original sin. The idea that humans have fallen from God were all inherently bad, although we do have the ability to be somewhat redeemed. This has engineered a sort of attitude of cautious optimism. We're not entirely 100% pessimists. All of this combined with the fact that our weather is pretty shit. Rain, rain, rain. Us Brits endure it on 199 days of every year. Is that a fact? There's 365 days, so 165 left. It's 160, 166 days of no rain. That's like winter in Chicago. Though. It's like 199 days of winter. So. You could literally have a week of sunshine in England and think, you know what, this Saturday, let's go for a picnic with the family. And then because your dad showed some optimism in the weather, God will smite you with a torrential downpour for the next month. But here at Mary Island Beach, and it's no time to stop. And so this... <laughs> Wait. Was that real or a skit? General attitude can be completely contrasted with American optimism. And that stems from, ultimately, if you're the type of person to leave Britain, a established nation that you know, has infrastructure, etc., hop on a boat, travel for weeks, months across uncharted waters to arrive on uncharted lands, to do that, you need at least an ounce of optimism. Look, water, lands in the distance, see? Mate, you've been saying that for the last three fucking icebergs. Oh, look, yeah, look, can you see it? Another fucking iceberg. I'm tired of this. <laughs> Fuck it. And then, so after discovering this new land, which was a crazy thing to go and do, America then went through two great awakenings. I don't know what happened in the first one, if they just hit snooze or something, but the first great awakening was in 1730 to 1740, and then the second one in 1795, all the way up to 1835. So what happened in this was that the religious attitudes of America had evolved. New ideas around like self-improvement, the idea that everyone has the ability to shape their own destiny and their own future. Humans can be better, they can improve society, they can make and create things that make the world better. Everybody, I know you can believe in yourself. They had strong convictions around the importance of working hard, as well as very pragmatic attitudes, the idea that things should be done well and efficiently. These last two led to a very strong cultural focus on capitalism and efficiency in business, which all of this manifested itself in the idea of the American dream. Don't, should I say it? That American dream does not apply to everybody, but continue. The American dream is just the ability to achieve. Anybody can do it, but you're not just going to get it because you want it. 
You got to be willing to work hard. You got to apply a lot of hard work. You got to apply faith. You got to apply persistence. You've got to never, ever give up. So basically, the idea of the American dream is that any old piece of shit, old Bob who still lives at home with his parents, 40 years old, anyone can go Them be the ones who own Apple and do anything they want to Amazon. do in life. That Americans are told they can become the next president of the United States. And they can. British people are told it won't happen to you. And they carry that. They carry that with them. I don't know what's probably going through your head. You might hear that and think, fucking hell, what? I feel like I'm a good look half and half. Why are Britain so pessimistic? I mean, we literally- Pessimistic and optimistic at the same time. We had the biggest empire on earth. Why are we so deflated? And so that leads us to a very core cultural difference between England and America, and that is class structure. I was brought up in, in a poor family, you know. Really, we had nothing, really. If I could get in a position that some of them people in, I, I would like to be in it. Uh, these lords or ladies or peers or you talking about these them class of people. <clears throat> the person's family started with William the Conqueror. In Britain, the idea of class and where you stand socially has been a very core part of our identity. Until very recently, as a Brit, your whole life was decided before you were born. These differences between the upper class and the working class has existed through most of British history. There's like this idea that the upper class are pure blood. They were like chosen by God. They had divine rights. They literally referred to themselves as blue blooded. And they were much better than the grunts working the coal mines to power their beautiful machinery. And so there's always been this attitude in England of like judgment between the classes. The upper class and the working class hate each other. And class is interesting because it's not just defined by wealth. We give dinner parties two or three times a week. This enables us to keep in touch with our wide circle of friends. We give a wine and cheese do once a month. This enables us to do it on the cheap. Her mother comes around Saturday nights and drinks my Guinness. <laughs> this enables her to get drunk for nothing. <laughs> Class is much deeper sure than simply that. wealth. It's the accent you talk in, the way you behave, the schools that you're educated in, if you're from Cambridge School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, versus the community college in Shittam. Literally everything you did would be defined by class. I think working class people in general feel this kind of thing weighing down upon them, and I can't put it into words of what it is. I think people watching this will understand that you feel it pushing you down all the time. And so there's this understanding that there isn't much class mobility. If you are lower class, even if you got wealthy, you could never be upper class. There's no way. And so this kind of demoralization spawned a attitude in British people that things can't really get that much better. I'm always going to be judged from basically the background that I'm from. In America, as I explained with the American dream, the attitude is that anyone can be anything. <laughs> Americans love the idea of the rags to riches story. The underdog archetype that you see in films like... I don't think that's true at all. I think as a black man in America, yes, you, you hear that a lot, the, oh, the American dream, but that's not for us. Even if we achieve the American dream, we're still going to be looked at like this. And we can't get to that dream unless we have the, 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 the the A-OK -okay from somebody that's not this color. I just want to, let's, let's clarify that. Like, we have to be, to get into a certain room, we got to be let in, period. And we can still get kicked out of that room no matter how much money we got. Ain't none of that. This might, this might be a little bit catly. <laughs> Pursuit of happiness or the founder. Class does exist in America, but it is very different. You're probably going to see more things between North and South divides and racial divides. But I do, as a British person, quickly want to make a caveat. The British people have never had like outright defeatism. British people will try in life. They'll try very hard, but we just don't like to get our hopes up. We are optimistic, but just in a very cautious way. Like Americans might aspire to be a millionaire CEO of a big tech startup, whilst British people people will aspire to one day shop at Waitrose. My wife likes to shop at Waitrose, it's the middle class. I aspire to one day put all my bills on auto pay. That's a different type of wealth. It's an option. The people who shop at Waitrose, they like to drop it into conversations. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, I was just at Waitrose! Just to everybody know. So the explanation on the class system leads us to another point, which is politeness and expressiveness. Here's your food, good sir. 
the fuck is that? Everything okay with the food? Oh yes, lovely, thank you. I would say British people are kind of overly aware of being rude and impolite, which has some benefits. You know, we're very, we treat people really well. We, we hate to be awkward and we like people to feel relaxed, but it can cause British people to take way too much shit and not stand up for themselves. What? <laughs> this October 10th and... Uh, man, I'm like that too, though. I don't want to create awkwardness, but no, you can't step up. You got one time to think I'm, to think I'm P U S S Y, and then we gotta go have to send it up. But yeah, unskippable is crazy. Turn the other cheek. I slap you and you want me to hit you on the other cheek? Americans will tolerate less bullshit, which is a good thing, but then sometimes they can be a bit rude and a bit overly confrontational. I have waited exactly five minutes. It is a bit- Nah, I'm a little bit overly confrontational in certain nights. Certain, certain, and like in the street, like I'm a little bit overly confrontational because a lot of people be sending jabs that don't seem like jabs and I'm not for that. Like you're not going to sneakily diss me. You know what I'm saying? So I can get overly, I can r incorrectly analyze the situation. Big Mac, how long do you need? This difference when it comes to being polite probably stems from the British reserve and American individualism. British people are very reserved. Typically in public, we all sit like this and we're all very quiet and we don't laugh too loud and we try and be really polite. And this can stem from the Victorian and chew your food without your mouth being open. Or in era, there was very strict social rules over behavior, dress, the way you express yourself. It was very stern and rigid. The reason we tolerate so much shit. Sorry. It is because we have the religious idea of turning the other cheek. As well, our probably over-awareness of people's personal space and being rude can probably stem from the fact that we live on a small island very closely together. We don't have a lot of space and we're all on top of each other. So we have a strong respect for people's personal Hey, the flag in my peripheral vision tweaked me out. My bad. Personal space. Okay. <laughs> and then, like, some of it is the fact that the upper class social attitudes probably trickled down to the working class, where it's always seen as being a lower class thing to speak loudly and have bad manners and be overly confrontational. Can you come back in, please? Oh my god, this is well harassment. I'm gonna take this to the court of human being rights. And so, British people have the attitude of a stiff upper lip, don't show emotion, and don't complain about your problems. All right. Well, that was fucking scary. Whereas <laughs> Americans, it that that is not the case. All right, what country are we in? In the United States. You're goddamn right. You can't take a picture okay, here. Okay, first of all, get back over there. You I have the a right to officers. speak. You I have Correct. Mm. I have a right to speak. This is my right as much as it is yours. This is my land as much as it is yours. To Americans, I am important. I am the center of the universe. After the Great Awakening, Note, you did not see any black people doing that in America. There was a strong focus on individualism. Emotionality and expression is a good thing. Being outgoing and extroverted is a very American thing. British people are very introverted. Americans, after things like the Bill of Rights, have a strong focus on their personal rights and freedoms and liberty. In America, all men are created equal. And so they don't have this idea of freedoms and liberty. In America, all men are created equal. We know that's cap. We all know that's cap. Prohibition, slavery, we know that ain't real. Now, it's unfortunate that we live in times like this, but you know, just recently I got called the N word. So it's like, mm, this ain't for me. Salute though. America, all men are created equal. And so they don't have this idea that you're better than me or I'm better than you by birthright. We're all humans, we all exist, and we all deserve respect. And so this leads to politics and the attitude toward authority. This is a, an illegal detention at this point. You, you better get your shit straight. Oh, I will file a complaint. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Like, right as soon as we leave here. Am I not human to you, huh? Americans are inherently very skeptical of authority. They believe more so in small government and self-autonomy due to the British ruling America and, you know, being a bit naughty, a bit rough around the edges. Like, I have to say one thing, man. There's white America and there's black America, and he is talking about white America. I'm just going to say it, and I'm going to say it. I'm not going to sugarcoat what I'm saying right now. He is, like, in the UK, that doesn't exist. 
this color UK and that color UK in America, you got two different Americas. <laughs> As well, Americans are very rebellious. The formation of America was around escaping the Church of England. In Britain, on the other hand, it is different. Damn, who is that? <laughs> he got a little different. We are. We do have a trust in our government. It is waning currently, but typically we trust in social order and we don't really make too much of a big deal about infringement of our rights. And that's probably because of years of unquestioned power by monarchs. And again, the stoicism and the idea of stiff upper lip, not complaining too much, not making a big deal. It kind of has led to this polite submissive behavior, which sometimes is a bit embarrassing. Careful, sir, it's hot. Oh, sorry. Might burn yourself. Yeah, sorry. Would you like some salt and pepper? Oh, yeah, sorry. Like you can kind of picture the movie scene of a British person, an American person dealing with authority. Excuse me, sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Listen here, tough guy. You don't talk to me like that. My hero. Hmm. I think the ghost fucked my head. Wait a minute. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll leave for sure. But darling, your dad owns a restaurant. Yes, but I don't want to be uh, rude. And so with all this, you can extrapolate these attitudes and understand different attitudes towards certain issues. You know, for instance, guns. Americans see guns as like a right to protect themselves from the government and other people. America's fast food and subsequent obesity problem has stemmed from the ideas of efficiency in business. Not wanting to waste time on food, taking too long to cook. And then you have things like healthcare and welfare. Like in Britain, we have a pretty strong healthcare system. Let's not get into that. Whereas Americans are far more reserved on bringing uh, NHS, I heard that was pretty terrible. Anything into public domain. A lot of long waits. Especially healthcare. Britain has an obsession with tradition, not holding tradition. Whereas America have a strong focus on new and innovation. New yeah, because America's history and their tradition is terrible. New products, technology. By making this- And they don't have their own. Screen taller, but not wider. You can see more of your content without the need to scroll. <laughs> We're making scrolling a thing of the past. And so look, I've picked apart British people and American people. I've made jokes, I've pointed out some bad things, but I want to say, and I think this is true, Americans and British people have a very deep mutual- Do one on black America. ...respect for each other. I think very much these days, ever since- If you do one on black America, you do one on, on, on UK versus USA, black usa culture it'd be more similar the war we've had what has been dubbed a special that's why i think i could rock that's why i think i rock with the uk so much because black America relationship and the UK i don't is know very if similar. that's a gay thing or something but whatever as a brit i can say honestly i really a lot of y'all might not understand what i'm talking about but a lot of y'all will really do love americans i love being around americans i really admire their confidence they're so easy to don't take me don't get me wrong man in my eyes all all people are the same color i don't even rock like that but the realization of it is what i have said talk to their very warm open demeanors british people can be very reserved at times excuse me young man is anyone sitting here no would you mind if we sat here no it's fine i'm ronald this is pammy wow. actually you forgot to tell us your name Peter. Peter! It can be pretty depressing talking with British people about the future and your ambitions. Whereas Americans are all patting you on the back saying, yeah, you can do it, bro. And I think Americans do appreciate British people as well. They probably appreciate our realism. We don't really bullshit ourselves. We're very honest. We know our strengths, but we also know our flaws. Often Americans see us as well-spoken and intelligent. And you can actually see our comedy has massively influenced modern American comedy. There's a lot more awkward, dry humor in American television now than there ever was in the past. And obviously, America Americans fucking love our traditions, arguably more than us. And it leads me to a final thought, and that is about cultural homogenization. With the internet, culture across the world has sort of melted together. We're all seeing the same media constantly. I will listen to endless American podcasters telling me to go after my dreams and fix my life or something. The idea that the internet is bringing lots of different value systems together and you can kind of choose which one suits you as opposed to just the one, Chicago to the UK. one that dominates your country. But I do wonder, are we going to see less of these interesting differences and are we just going to become a sort of best of greatest album kind of thing? Let me know in the comments if you want to see more on this topic, check out the Afters podcast where we talk more. Yeah, we got to address black America and 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 you guys are realists over there, but realize that, that that is not the same. But TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, and go.